And good morning. We thank you for joining the God's Way Ministers once again for another great Bible study on the book of Acts. As you know that we have been studying the book of Acts and we're actually in Acts chapter 8 this morning. And we're excited because it's ramping us up for one of the great stories that's in the book of Acts that's coming up after this chapter. So we thank you for joining us once again. And as always, we say this is a day that the Lord has made and we should rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because we all know God is good all the time and all the time. Our God is truly good. So let us get right into what God has for us. We're going to have prayer and we're going to jump right into Acts chapter 8. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for another opportunity, Lord, to come before this, your people, Lord. And as always, we ask you to take us completely out of self, O oh God, that you will get the glory. You will get the honor and the praises out of everything that is said and done here. Lord God, just come in and have your way right now, Lord. Open this passage up to us all. Dear Lord God, that we may get a better understanding of what you're trying to tell us, Father God, through your word. And not only that, Lord, that we'll be able to share this word with others, Father, in the name of Jesus, and let them know of the great things that you have done, Father God, and what you can and will do in their life. Lord, bless us right now. Grab us all by the reins of our minds, O oh God. Help us to stay focused on your word, your will, and your way. Have your way again right now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, as I was reading Acts chapter 8, one thing kept sticking out in my mind, and it was sowing seeds. Sowing seeds. You know that when we came out of Acts chapter 7, you saw how they were laying their coats at the feet of Saul, who we would really, who we will find out later on in the book of Acts, will be changed from Saul to Paul. But they were laying their coats at his feet while they were stoning one of God's people, while they were stoning Stephen to death. While they took Stephen through trial, Saul was there and he saw all of this. And so when we talk about sowing seeds, they sowed a seed of discord between Saul and the church to where Saul had gotten to the point to where now, hey, if these men who are supposed to be in the church and of the church, if they're going around, they're breathing threats and murder and they're destroying the people of God. Hey, I guess that's what I'm supposed to be doing. It's just like when you're around people and people begin to say things and do things. People understand life and death really do lie in the power of the tongue. It really does. Why? You have to be careful when you keep telling your child, you just like your daddy or you just like your mom or you just like this person or just like that person. And you don't know what type of seeds that you're sowing in that child's life. I learned that when you and your spouse are always arguing and cussing and fussing and raging and caging at each other around your kids, that sows seeds to where your kids feel like what? I guess that's how marriage is supposed to be. Mom and dad fight all the time. So I guess when I get in my relationship and I get with my husband or I get with my wife, that's how we're supposed to act. If we're not fussing and cussing at each other, I guess we don't love each other. Sowing seeds of discord. Sowing bad seeds. But we're not going to only talk about bad seeds being sown in the book of Acts chapter 8, but we're also going to be talking about good seeds sown as we get to the middle part and towards the end of Acts chapter 8 you will see where good seeds are being sown as well. So verse 1 says, And Saul was consenting unto the, his death. In other words, he was consenting to Stephen's death. He was okay with it. It was fine. And at that time, there was a great persecution against what? The church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. So now, we're on the run. Because of what? Because of the simple fact now, you got folks that are coming against people like Stephen. And they were only mad with Stephen because Stephen was highly spiritually educated. Stephen spent a lot of time with God in order to learn the things that he learned. And it's amazing to me, I was telling my wife the other day, I never get jealous of preachers that seem to know a little bit more than me. Why? Because that means what? I can learn from them. I can glean from the field of their knowledge instead of, man, I'm a, uh, 
what you doing? You know, I can't be around that. He, he talk over my head. I don't understand him. It's not just you don't understand him. The fact is, you feel like he knows a little bit more than you do. And if you feel like that, hey, ask him to help you get to where he is or she is in the, in the ministry. That will help you grow instead of you being envious and jealous of them. But in the church, that was a they were great division. They done scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except for the apostles and devout men. Going back to Stephen, carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. In other words, they, they, they made a great cry over him. They made everything, you know, grand about Stephen. Why? Because everybody knew what Stephen, who Stephen was and what Stephen was about. And so they, they wanted to make sure that they paid homage unto him. Verse 3 says, as for Saul, he made havoc of the church. That one, that seed that was planted in him, that you know what? Hey, Stephen ain't right. That means the whole church must not be right. All of them are not doing what they need to do. And I don't want to be around Christian folks. I don't want to have nothing to do with Christian people. And I've learned that that even in the church, bad seeds can be sown to where folks don't want to come to church no more. They don't want to be around anybody that's talking about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They don't want to have anything to do with anything that has anything to do with God. Why? Because they went to church one time and somebody did or said something that hurt them. And I get it. People say, well, folk hurt your, your feelings at the club, but you keep going back. Folks hurt your feelings at the grocery store, but you keep going back. Well, let me fix that for, for those that keep saying that. Well, this is my thing. It's something different about when I go to church. Because when you go to church, you go to church expecting to what? Be healed. Why? Because the church is a spiritual hospital. So when you go to church expecting to be healed and you wind up being more broken than what you were before you went in there, it makes you not want to go there because it's like, look, I was already tattered, bruised, and beat up out in the world. I go to the church trying to seek help because I'm tattered, beat up, and bruised by the world. And then the church winds up doing what? Beating me down, tearing me up, messing me up. So why keep going? In other words, they say like most people, I'm damned if I do and I'm damned if I don't. In other words, I'm going to hell either way. So why keep going? And people don't understand that a lot of times those seeds, because they're dealing with church folk and not Christians, those church folks sow bad seeds and they run folks off. So that seed that was sown into Saul, now Saul is just making havoc in the church. Enter into every house and hauling men and women, committing them to prison. He hauling them out because they're Christians, hauling them off to jail and locking them up. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. So in other words, they went outside of Jerusalem and going around in the different regions, preaching and teaching God's word. Because what? Saul was breathing threats and murder. Saul was tearing up, wreaking havoc right there where they were. So they scattered out and it went abroad. And that's what happens when bad seeds are sown. When bad seeds are sown in people's lives, you have what you you have those mass shooters going around. You have folks that, well, you know, my dad was a drunk, so I guess I'm gonna be one too. You know, my mama ran the streets, so I guess I'm gonna do it too. Because people keep saying I'm just like them. They say I look just like my daddy, so I'm gonna start acting like my dad. They say I look like my mama, I'm gonna start acting like her. Bad seeds. And then you deal with folks that don't want to go to church. So what they do, they sow that into their children. They sow the dislike of the church because why? They were hurt in the church. And when you don't understand church hurt, I want to tell you right now, if you don't understand church hurt, keep your mouth off of it. Because you really don't understand what people are dealing with. You really don't understand it. And sometimes your comments can't do nothing but make it worse instead of helping. Instead of helping them to realize, you know what? Not all churches are like this. We're loving. We're, 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 you know, we're, we're glad that you're here. We want to do whatever we can to help you. Don't tell them your church hurt don't mean nothing. You, you just don't know the Lord because you, you don't want to come to church. It ain't got nothing to do with that. You're not saved because you do this. No, it's not that. 
It's somewhere along the line they tried to get close to somebody in the church and they were hurt by somebody who was supposed to be helping them. You never, you, so you never got mad with the doctor because the doctor prescribed you the wrong medication and instead of him helping you, he's hurting you. Did you go back to that same doctor? Nine times out of ten, you didn't. You went to somebody else. So that's what happens when the seeds of discord and bad seeds are sown. It causes problems. It wreaks havoc. It changes things. It messes things up. So as we get to verse 5, let's talk about good seed. We don't want to keep talking about bad stuff and dwelling on bad things. Let, let's talk about good seeds being sown. Verse 5 said, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. So in other words, what? When they say they gave heed, they start listening. They took notice. They start learning. People were being changed. Lives were being changed. Folks were being healed. People were being delivered. Why? Because Philip was preaching the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. And when people are hearing and seeing miracles, lives are being changed and people are being added. Souls are being added to the kingdom of God. Verse 7 says, For unclean spirits, crying with loud voices, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsy, and that were lame were healed. There was all kinds of healing and miracles and signs and wonders going on. And there was great joy in that city. Folks were rejoicing. Why? Because the word of God was being preached. You ever been to church and you were excited because the word of God was being preached? And not only was it being preached, it was changing your life. It was piercing your heart and letting you know, Lord, I, I'm ready for a change. I need you to clean me up. I need you to deliver me. Bring me out of this foolishness, out of this mess that I'm in. And you're excited to hear the word of God. Everybody was excited about it. Verse 9 said, but there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery. And he bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was someone great. In other words, he was perceiving to be someone that he wasn't. He was deceiving the people and he was using sorcery to mess with their minds and cast spells on them and, and make them think other things and do things that they shouldn't be doing. It says, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest saying, this man is the great power of God. He came in and deceived everybody. Had everybody following him thinking that he was with God. He was a man of God and come to find out he really wasn't. It says, and to him they had regard. In other words, they revered and respected him because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorcery. So in other words, good morning, Daddy. So in other words, they were all being messed up in the head because of the simple fact that they really thought that he was truly what he said he was. And we have a lot of that going on today. A lot of folks are being deceived. If you look in different lands and in different countries, you'll see where these folks are doing some of the weirdest things that you ever want to see in church. And they're claiming to be men and women of God. And you're leading men and women, boys and girls, straight to hell. And you know it, but you continue to do it. And don't realize that whenever we do things like that, that blood is required on our hands. Because of the simple fact, you weren't leading them to Christ. You were purposely leading these people to hell. And verse 12 said, but when they believe Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. They were baptized, both men and women. It says when they believed Philip, who was preaching and teaching the word of God. He was preaching and teaching the things concerning the kingdom of God. The change came about. That's why I love that song that Tremaine Hawkins does. She said the change. Oh, change has come over me. A change, a wonderful change has come over me. 
I'm not the same. I don't walk the same. I don't talk the same. I don't live the same. He said he changed my walk. He changed everything that there was about me. So these people were excited and they were wanting to receive Jesus Christ in their life. They wanted to be baptized, both men and women. Why? Because they heard, they listened. It's something about when the word of God enters your life and it changes you. You don't have the desire to do the things that you used to do. You don't have the desire to walk the way you used to walk. You don't have the desire to hang around certain folk that you used to hang around no more. Why? Because God took all of that away from you. And verse 13 said, then Simon himself believed also. The same man that was bewitching folks and tricking people. <laughs> Wind up listening. As the old song said, I went to a meeting one night and my heart was because something did what got a hold of me. When something got a hold of, he couldn't fight it off. Why? Because he knew it was Jesus. When Jesus gets a hold of you, when you come in contact with the Lord, you will never, ever be the same. There's no way you can come in contact with God and turn around and still live the same way that you used to live. He said, then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and the signs which were done. The same man that was leading folks to hell is now leading people to Christ. Those seeds that are being sown. He saw Philip. He listened to him. That seed was sown into him and it changed his life forever. So now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. They were baptized, and after they were baptized, and, and they, uh, they were forgiven of their sins, they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hand that the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. He was like, man, how can I buy what you got? You know, y'all got something I want, so how can I pay for it? And I learned people got to understand salvation is free. You can't buy it. You can't buy the effects of the Holy Ghost. You can't buy the Holy Ghost. It's free for us if we were willing to receive it. Saying, give me also this power that on whosoever I lay hand, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, the money perish with thee because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. He said, man, that, that's not even, that's temporary. You trying to purchase something that is everlasting with something that is temporary and it won't work. It will not work. He said, no, that's going to perish right along with you because you thinking that you can purchase the gift of God with money. He said, thou hast neither part nor lot in this manner. For thy heart is not right in the sight of God. He said, you ain't even got no right to even deal with none of this. Why? Because your mind ain't right. Your mind is about making money. Your mind is about making money off of the gift of God. And you got some people that are like that. You got some preachers that are like that. They're preaching for the money. It's not about the souls. It's not about helping people. It's not about uh, seeing people be healed, delivered, and set free. It's about making that money. It's about how much can I make? How much can I get out of these people? <coughs> Excuse me. Verse 22 said, repent therefore for this thy wickedness and pray God if perhaps that the thought of thine heart might be forgiven. In other words, Peter, was, I mean, in other words, the apostle was letting him know. He said, return. In other words, ask God to forgive you for even having the mindset of thinking that you could profit off of the gift of God. He said, ask God to forgive you for that. He said, turn away and ask for forgiveness. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. He said, you are far away from where you need to be. He said, you're trying to, to act like you're saved and delivered and changed. He said, but now what you're really trying to do is trying to take what we're doing and finding a new way to make money. No. He said, then ask the son and say, pray ye to the Lord for me that none of these things which ye have spoken unto me will happen. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of Samaria. They kept going. 
doing what God wanted them to do, spreading the word abroad. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is in, de in which is desert. And he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia and eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot. And he read Esaias, the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. He said, go and join him. See, God will put you in the right place at the right time to help the right people. And I'm learning that even on your job. Some, some of us don't understand why we're there. Ask God, what's the purpose of me being on this job? What is the purpose of me going to this church? Why am I here? What is the purpose, Lord, that you brought me to this grocery store today? There have been times and we have been in grocery stores and we meet somebody and we're sitting there and we're talking about the word of God and sharing the word of God with them. And that was not your intention for coming to the store. Your intention of coming to the store was to make grocery. Your intention was to buy medicine or whatever it is you needed. And you wind up standing there talking about the word of God and someone is saved. Someone is delivered. They're set free. So God places you in the right places at the right time to do his will. It says, and Philip, in verse 30, and Philip ran thither to him and heard him reading the prophet Esaias and said, understanding thou what thou read? In other words, do you understand? Do you comprehend the word of God? Are you understanding what's being said to you? And he said, how can I? Except some man should guide me. And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. An opportunity. There are times when God makes opportunities for us to share the word of God with others. Are you taking advantage of the opportunity? Or are you turning and, well, Lord, I, I, I just don't have it in me. I don't know enough about the Bible, so I can't share with nobody. I, I don't know. God wouldn't put you in a predicament to where he wants you to share his word with somebody. And it's going to embarrass you or make you look bad. That's not what God's about. God puts you in that position because, hey, you can relate to that person. They can relate to you or you have a way with words. He's gifted you with what you need. So since he's already gifted you with what you need, now he makes the opportunity for you to use the gift that you have. He said, why? Because your gift will do what? Make room for you. So Philip's gift made room for him. This man said, how can I understand what I'm reading except some man should guide me? And he said, Philip, will you please teach me? Will you please instruct me? So verse 32 said, the place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shears, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? And then Philip opened his mouth and began at that same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. He wanted him to understand this is who they're talking about. It's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, see here is water. What does hinder me to be baptized? In other words, after hearing the word of God, the eunuch said, I want to change. I want, <laughs> I, I want an experience. I want to be baptized. I, I want to repent of my sins. I want to change. And a lot of us, we need to change. We go to church Sunday after Sunday. I told you last Sunday, we go to church Sunday after Sunday. And nothing happens. We go Sunday. Whew, my sinuses are bothering me. I'm sorry. We go Sunday after Sunday, and we never change. And this man heard the word of God and immediately wanted to be baptized. We have to learn, open your heart, open your spirit up to the word of God. When he opened his heart up and he said, look, I ain't got nobody to teach me. I want to know about this God. I want to know about Jesus. When he opened his heart and mind up and Philip began to teach and preach the word of God to him, a change came over this man. And he said, look, what's hindering me? Here's the water right here. He was just that excited. He said, Philip, what's hindering me from being baptized? There's water right here. And Philip said, if thou believest 
with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe just what he said. That's what John P. Key says in that song. He says, I have my mansion now. Why? Because I believe. He says, I believe that he is the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I believe that he can heal, deliver, and set free. I believe that he can forgive sins. He said, because of that, in verse 38, and he commanded the chariot to stand still. He said, stop right here. Stop what you're doing. He said, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he was baptized right then and there. And when they were come up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. He was happy. He said, Lord, I thank you for your deliverance. Lord, I thank you for your peace. Lord, I thank you for removing this habit from me. Lord, I thank you for making a way out of no way in my life. He was shouting and rejoicing because what? Now I know a savior and he's sweet. I, I, I'm, not I'm not trying to preach. I'm not trying to preach. I, I'm supposed to be teaching, but I get excited when I start talking about the Lord and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we serve. He says, he's sweet, I know. Now he's, he's changed me. Now I got somebody to walk with me that won't put me down. Now I got somebody that loves me just for me. He was excited to know Jesus. And our very last and final verse said, but Philip was found at Azotus and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. So he kept doing what God told him to do. He was dropping seeds of goodness, of blessings, of mercy, of joy, of peace, of deliverance. He was just dropping seeds. And it's something about when you drop good seeds, they come back, they grow. And when they grow, they grow up and they are able now, now he's able to share the word with somebody. And so he sows a seed. That seed grows, and then that person sows another seed, and that seed, and it continues to go on and on and on. The word of God continues to flow. It said it, it is it's just like when you when you gossip. We gossip and gossip grows all over the place. Well, instead of gossiping about stuff that's not important, that don't make no sense, can't heal, can't deliver, can't set you free. Let's start talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's start sharing that. That's your sharing with others how good God is. When you sow those good seeds, Dr. McKenzie says sow good seed. You better sow good seed. Why? Because you won't reap just what you sow. So when you sow the right thing, the right thing comes back. But when you start sowing that bad stuff, that bad stuff begins to come back. Well, my time is up here. I've enjoyed it. It was great. I hope that you all learned a lot out of Acts chapter 8 because again like I said it's setting us up for one for another great story in the Bible that we all have heard before so we look forward to seeing you back here on Sunday morning for those that can make it or we look forward to seeing you right back here on next Wednesday for another blessed word from God as we continue to do it God's way God bless you and we love you